So Gray, yeah. what have you heard? You posted it. You found out earlier than I did. What have you heard so far? Yeah, apparently, uh, sweet. All, okay, the first time we heard about sweet babies, um, like tactics, should you say, is the GDC conference where the president was saying, "Oh, you you put them, you have you eat that, uh, you have a meeting with them and lunch, and you threaten them, you threaten them to." Um, you scare them so that they will sign up for your consultancy services. Back then, we didn't know how severe it was. We thought it was just like literally just talking to them and like making like those, those blanket threatening statements. But it turns out it's far worse. It's literally, oh, if you don't if you don't hire us for our services, we're gonna do a co- we're gonna create coordinated hit pieces on your game preemptively so that you can experience um, lower sales because of our you know because of our negative criticism. And yeah, and apparently for a small developer like the developers Game Science for Wukong, they're asking for a whopping seven million dollars. So imagine if they can get they can extract that much money from indie devs. Mm-hmm. How much money are they getting from the AAA ones like Warner Brothers or BioWare or Square Enix? Imagine how much money did they actually get from the, from them? So anyway, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's my preemptive intro. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, I want to bring it up. And this all stems when Hideo Kojima, it sort of came back to it, right? So Hideo Kojima right over here on, on X says, this title has been on my mind since I saw the first trailer about three years ago, Black Myth Wukong. Its original look, design, coloring, effects, and presentation have an outstanding sense of style that sets it apart from other games. I've also been eagerly following uh, the game science and development team. Finally, its release has been confirmed. The theme of Monkey King Sun Wukong is also familiar for my generation. I'm looking forward to it. Black Myth Wukong will be released on August 20th. And I fucked up, chat. I wanted the statue. I thought that the... I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait for it. It's because pre-ordering from a uh, new game development that's making a triple A style game. So it's like, I'm like, oh, it's going to be, I'm not sure if it's going to be good, right? But I wanted the statue. I'm like, I'm going to hold off on it. And then it sold out. And the PS, the PC version is also sold out, which sort of sucks. Man, I, I thought this was, this looks really good. But uh, I, I might just end up getting the the, the the deluxe version, maybe. I'm not sure. But Gray, you're you're picking up this game, right? Like I, I am basically, I'm basically assuming he is right, but uh, but for me, I, I hope that I am going to be playing this game after near Automata. But the thing is, that a lot of people really enjoyed it. Say, I, I never watched the show. I watched this one growing up, which is the one with Dicky Chan. I mean, Dicky Chung. And yeah, overall, it's really, really good. But there are a lot of people who are actually really, really upset. This one person who actually um messaged. I can't find that um. Uh, that actual message right now, but actually says, why are you promoting a company that's sexist towards women? Right? Why are you promoting um, a company that's sexist towards women? Now, if you actually go all the way back to November 20th, 2023, there's an article that came out by IGN. Right over here. Yeah, SB, uh, CBB Inc. knows they're, they have no ropes on, they are... Gr- uh, so they are asking for whatever they think that they can get away with. Yeah, a limit. Yeah, it's so stupid, man. But yeah, they basically said how Black Myth Wukong developers' history of sexism is complicating its journey to the West, which is really freaking... This is last year, right? Indie developer Game Science's global fame is forcing it to confront its own sexism that the Chinese tech in, uh, for the Chinese tech industry. So if you go down over here, right over here, this, this is where it gets spicy. Right For an indie studio that has only released mobile titles within the country, this widespread acclaim over Black Myth Wukong is largely unprecedented feat, particularly for a game that has not yet been released. Oh, sorry, not uh, been released yet. But underneath the luster of the Souls Light is a studio plagued by claims of sexism. So this is not an actual... Not an actual, like, official thing, but claims of sexism. Gray, how do you feel about them saying that this is a claim? Yeah. When, can you scroll up and see when when was this article posted? November of last year. Yeah, if, if you think about the timeline, right, it makes sense. Like, oh, you, you got to get our consultancy services or else we're going to, 
in a coordinated attack. So uh, yeah, IGN's really, IGN's really the new Kotaku, the more well-funded Kotaku, I suppose. And yeah, it's just, it's pretty disgusting. Dude. It's like, uh, this kind of seals the deal for me personally. It's like anything associated with SBI. It's like you, it's like you really shouldn't support it anymore. Like if yep. like if if we find out like Assassin's Creed Shadows has SBI in particular, like yeah, maybe I shouldn't cover the game after all. Maybe it's like not even if I just sub for Ubisoft for a month. It's like it's supporting these kinds of disgusting behavior. It it in my opinion it should be illegal. Like it's this this is borderline like terror like unethical already. It's not it's not bad business anymore. It's just it's downright straight up unethical and should be legally scrutinized at this point. Yeah. That's all I, I agree. Feel. All right. So several posts have surfaced from Chinese social media Weibo written by individuals from the studio that that uh, that contain multiple references to genitalia and sexual innuendos. These have provoked a backlash among some of the game's community, many whom are women. Uh, sure. Uh, l l l let's say I believe you for many of whom are women. This was occupied by recruitment posters by the studio produced in 2015, which feature images and headlines that point to a culture uh, of ingrained sexism in game science. So here's the thing. I would like to see these posters. If you have proof, show it. All right? Back up your claim. IGN spoke to several women familiar to, uh, sorry, with gaming culture as well as the games and technology industry in China, many of whom requested to be anonymous. Oh, yeah, sure. I bet you <laughs> IGN would be like, anonymous. Do you, are, like, do you want to be anonymous for this one? Because it, it could bite you in the ass. It's like, should, do you want to do this? You might not get a job anymore. And they're like, yeah, I probably should just in case. They were probably coerced to do it, right? Yeah. Uh, so basically saying, saying that many of whom requested to be anonymous, the fear of backlash from fans, not the game studio, the fans of game science and the broader games community. Quote, in the eyes of many female players, game science has notably negative reputation, said Jen. Pseudonym. Uh, yeah. This is, this is like a hearsay. This is like, this person told me, but you know, they want to be anonymous, but yeah. A Chinese game designer who is now based outside of China. I admire their dedication and work. I had high expectations for their game until I came across their misogynistic remarks around 2021, which was reported in the news. IGN reached out to Game Science ahead of the publication of this article, but the studio did not respond to the request. Now, if you actually go back to the original IGN post on X, right? This is the actual uh, basic report. Now, if you scroll down, what do you see here? It got community noted. It says, sexist quotes shown in the article are poorly translated. Accurate translations show the statements being vulgar, but definitely not sexist. IGN reporting on these fallacious, unverified claims as though their fact is yellow journalism and not because they're Chinese, uh, which <laughs> CNs uh, were made to combat but that's not it that's not all of it this has to tie back to sweet baby ink like we said earlier now this comes to us from pirate nation which a which is basically talked about this chinese media black myth wukong refused to be extorted seven million dollars by sweet baby seven million is, can you imagine that that's Same. nothing man that's no that's nothing for for big companies like that and the thing is that like I mentioned before, um, all of the gaming companies in China is one way or another sort of, um, sort of in charge by the uh, the Chinese government. Like they have, like, yeah. And, and yeah, I I get that it's small in the context of the game devs, but given the what Sweet Baby is, seven million is a lot. I mean, being Sweet Baby, what it receives. Given its services, that, that that's yeah. a lot. Given like it's it's a small indie company, like for me it's like it's still what what did they ask for for Bioware for Warner Brothers for the Suicide Squad game for Sony, what did they ask for if they asked an indie company seven million? That's what I'm trying to say. They got they probably yeah. got like what times five times ten of that for what they yeah, maybe. do. That that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Yeah, man. 
Let's see. Uh, now, this is this is the translation from the original one right over here. Uh, the reason why the team behind Black Myth Wukong has been subjected to persistent sexist attacks and slander since their first promotional video is because they have consistently refused political correctness guidance and rejected the extortionate guidance fees of millions of dollars demanded by these political correctness teams. I wouldn't now. This person did not like actually name the company, but based off some of the games I'm seeing, we already know who, right? Actually, such teams are quite common in Europe and America. They interfere with works like Assassin's Creed, Dying Light 2, Stay Human, and God of War. So we already know which company they're talking about. By pushing for politically correct female protagonists, these changes are a direct result of the interference and guidance of such teams. Game science teams refuse to communicate uh, with these groups and reject their interference. Most importantly, they refuse to pay the exorbitant so exorbitant $7 million in guidance fees. This is the direct reason why they are being attacked and slandered. Some justifications are based on the team's lack of diversity or representation, which doesn't align with the political correctness standards. The team's lack of diversity or representation, do they not know where this game is being made? And where... What's the story of the game? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. A typical example is an article by a major IGN writer criticizing Hogwarts legacy and refusing to evaluate or promote due to his alleged lack of political correctness. Now, here's the thing. For you guys who don't know about Journey to the West, it's probably one of my favorite like mythologies from, uh, from China. Like, uh, and, and it has a, a ties into Buddhists and stuff like that. And the thing is, like I said before, uh, you have billions of people who are working in this game. Most billions of people that are working on this game are Chinese. Most of them are. Okay, so the fact that it's like, oh, y'all look alike. It is, what, it is what it is, right? More importantly, the game is, is based off of mythological creatures that Sun Wukong fights. They're all demons and they're either like demigods or actual gods. He never fights humans. So that's the reason why you're not going to ever see a black person in this story because it doesn't fucking make sense. Gray, go ahead and continue talking. I'm, a, I'm getting pissed off. Yeah. Well, we've already kind of said everything that needs to be said, but yeah. Fuck this company. Like, I hope they really go down on this. It's not, it's not a matter of uh, hope they pivot or actually provide useful service. I hope they go down on there. If they're, we only found out recently that they they go that far in providing these services and I suppose the companies too, the, the publishers too, they're also partly to blame for actually caving and giving them this amount of money for whatever it is that value they see they're doing. But I, now that I think about it, it's because they're afraid of the hit pieces, not because they want them as for their guidance. It's more of avoiding bad PR. That, that's what they're more afraid of. It's like They feel like they'll get... Like it's better to just pay them off than maybe somehow the executives think the potential losses that they, that will be incurred for the negative reviews. But I, yeah. I mean, like for the top brass in like Square Enix, uh, what do you call this? Warner Brothers, Sony. I mean, don't you gotta treat your audience with more respect than that? Of course, they're, like just all you need to do if I were in your shoes, like. Like, uh, disclose this. Disclose everything that went down. Like, the way that game science said, oh, this sweet baby company, they tried to extort us. That, that's it. You, you have the people on your side. And, and indirectly speaking, that's actually good marketing for your game. Like, for I'm sure this this is excellent marketing from sweet baby for Black Hill Wukong. I'm sure a lot oh, of people yeah. a lot of people are going to order, are going to drop the, I'm going to buy the game now because of finding out this news. And, yeah, and yeah, that's the reason why the collector's edition is gone. It's <laughs> it's it the, the the it's cheap. The digital deluxe edition is sixty bucks. So and the regular edition is like fifty. So I was like, I, I I will just go for the digital deluxe after finding out about this news. Yeah. See, this is this is what Sweet Baby tried to do, but did not work. Right? We Gray, you talked about this before. Have a coffee with marketing so that you can absolutely terrify them by telling them, here's what's going to happen if you don't do this. That didn't work. It didn't work out so well for them. Now, what makes it worse is this. These person right over this person, these people who wrote and edited the thing, Rebecca Valentine. 
pronouns in bio, uh, protected uh, posts. Okay. Now, the thing is that, let's see what this person has said. Right over here. After that mishandled translation debacle on Black Myth Wukong hit piece, IGN needs to issue a retraction and apology along with the authors who smeared them. The authors, Duck Valentine, which is the person, and, uh, and Ki Hoon, Ki Hoon Chan, all right? This person is Ki Hoon Chan, like I said before. I have no affiliation with this Chan person. We are not related, and I disavow this person, all right? No, no, no relationship with Ki Hoon Chan. Okay, no relation. Yo, what's going on, X-Wing? How's it going, man? What's going on, dude? But yeah, uh, no relation, all right? But let's say, have gone protected because uh, instead of a... Because that's what these people do. When they get caught red-handed, when they get too much flack, they don't want to respond to everything. You know what? I'm just going to go... I'm going to put pronouns in my bio and protect and private my account, right? This is what she said. The snake spirits is different from what I've imagined. But if I cover the bottom half with my hand, it's still possible to jerk off. Now, here's the thing. If you guys don't know about the snake spirit and the spider spirits in Sun, uh, Sun Wukong, they are attractive for a reason. Okay? It's even like that in the uh, live action TV show back in 1996. Right? So... They are actually attracted for reasons because they want to lure you in. They want they want to lure in the what's it called again? Uh, they they basically pour unfortunate souls to suck on their essence, right? There's uh, later on in Sun Wukong's story, he meets a monkey that is extremely extremely jealous of Sun Wukong. It's like a rival monkey, and he basically is like, "Oh, what you had, I should have that. You didn't fucking." You didn't fucking um, earn anything of this. So what happened? There's a snake demon that's extremely attractive with big ass tits, right? Basically s offered herself to like, hey, how about if I give you some of my, um, you know, demonic essence so you can take on Sun Wukong? And he was like, okay, cool. So basically that's her goal was to basically entrap him and eventually kill him. But she falls in love with this other monkey, right? Mm. So in the end, she sacrifices herself. She basically takes the monkey's like, I can't take down Sun Wukong. I need to take him down. How the fuck do I do it? So she's like, I really, I'm in love with you. Like take all my essence. He's like, but it will kill you. But this is what you want. This is your dream. I will sacrifice myself to do that. That's what these snake spirits and spider spirits, they're supposed to be attractive. Now this mother, dumb motherfucker over here does not know anything. And Ki Hoon dick sucker right over here is even fucking worse. Do you know why? Because this Ki Hoon motherfucker hates white people. He actually said it right over here. Sifu review, Kung Fu gripe. Sifu has nothing new to teach fans. Roguelike action adventure games, but it makes an attempt. If you go to the next one, I uh, I think it's also uh, worth noting that Sifu was developed by an all-white European development team. And some aspects of the games do come off as culturally tone deaf. I suggest checking out the article by Ki Hoon Chan for more about the aspects of Sifu. And what does, what does he say? Oh, this, I'm pretty sure this is a he, she, dumb sucker. Do I hate white people? Yes. If you are a friend, you'll understand why this is never personal. I hate white privilege so much. Their ability to scream reverse racism when faced with a tiny bit of criticism. The world revolves around them even in Singapore every day. These are the two people that wrote that article. And they went private. And this motherfucker right over here, this piece of shit right over here, looks like a person who works in San Francisco. But yeah, um, that's not going to work. Your extortion money, China could give a, could give a rat's ass what, what we think. They're just going to continue making their big-ass games, right? Genshin Impact made billions of dollars. Hong Kong Star Rail makes billion, billions of dollars. And now you have Withering Waves that's going to, on track, make a billion dollars. I hope this game uh, Black Myth Wukong makes a shit ton of money. Yeah. Man. Korea yeah, too. sorry. I, I, I went on a rant there. Yeah, it's fine. It's Korea 2 is also making a, a rising in terms of gaming and consoles because they, they know their audience. They don't listen to, to these woke freaks. And Japan is starting to wake up, at least some of them, like Square. Th thankfully, Square's starting to pivot. And yeah, uh, I think the future of gaming is, in, is really in the East. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, 
hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.